بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Welcome to another episode of Refresh Your Iman, Refresh Your Faith. Welcome to the teaching of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم من بعث من كتاب الله. Today we want to talk about how to be a beneficial person, how to benefit others. According to Hadith Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu wa sahahu al-albani, a man came to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, ayy al-nasi ahabbu ila Allah, who are those people who Allah loves them most? The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, ironically, when, when I heard this Hadith for the first time, as a student of knowledge, I thought the end of the hadith would be Allah loves those who do this, do that. But the messenger of Allah brought it from a very simple uh, and he said, أَحَبُّ النَّاسِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَنْفَعُهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ Ajib al-amr. The messenger of Allah said, the people that Allah loves most are those who will benefit others most. And the unique thing is, he didn't say those who will benefit the believers, those who will benefit the, what do you call the Muslims, those who will benefit the race of a certain category. No, he said all mankind and fa'ahum linnat. Now that Sahabi also came back with another question because the Sahaba of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would ask questions that would lead them to Jannah. They were very, very business minded people towards Jannah. They were not business minded towards dunya and making money. Their mind, they were mindful of Akhirah. So the Sahabi قال, وَأَيُّ الْأَعْمَالِ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ Now I know the category of people that Allah loves, but this statement, Ya Rasulullah, is very general. So why don't you tell me, as the Sahabi is saying to this Messenger of Allah, why don't you tell me deeds that Allah loves? Ya Ibad Allah, you think what the Messenger of Allah said to, said to this man? The man said, what are the deeds that Allah loves? Once again, because of my ignorance, I thought the Messenger of Allah would say, go jihad fi sabila, don't come back until you die. Give your wealth like Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and do not, do not leave a penny at home. You know, do this. But the Messenger of Allah, he said, أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُرُورٌ تُدْخِلُهُ عَلَى مُسْلِمٌ Ya Salaam. Simple, very simple. Every one of us is capable of doing that. He said, one of the most beloved deeds in the sight of Allah, joy that you bring to a Muslim. That's it. Just make sure that this Muslim in front of you is happy. Why? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi even encouraged more and he said, وَتَبَسُّمُكَ فِي وَجْهِ أَخِيكَ صَدَقَ and he's smiling in the face of your Muslim brother is a sadaqah. We can all do this. We can all do simple things that you can make me happy, I can make you happy. But we choose to make each other miserable. You know, if I hear something good about you, I may not expose you or I may not share with the rest. But if I hear something bad about you, I will be vocal about it. I will be speaking about it left and right. At the same time, you will do the exact the same thing. But the Sahaba were different. Some of the narration that I will tell you won't do it to a limited time that we have. Once upon a time, or once the Messenger of Allah with Abu Bakr and Umar, they were coming back after Salat al-Isha and they passed by the masjid. In the masjid there was this young man and this young man was in another level of khushur in his salam, reciting the Quran in a beautiful level with like the malaika al kiram al-barara and he was not paying attention to who may listen because that was not his intention. But the messenger of Allah where they were, where, where, when they were passing by the masjid he stopped and he looked and he listened to this beautiful recitation. And then when, they, when he finished, when the young man finished, the messenger of Allah, he said to Abu Bakr and Umar who was with them, he said, Man arada an al-Qur'ana qattan tariyan kama unzil fal yaqra'a qira'ati hada. He said, if you want to ever, if you ever want to recite the Qur'an the way it was revealed, fresh, crisp, then recite like this young man. Umar ibn al-Khattab is telling his side of the story. 
he said, I know the young man. I did not want to disturb him in the salah, but I want to give him the good news so he can smile. I want to bring joy to him because the messenger of Allah said, He said, but I also know I have someone who always competes with me, Abu Bakr. Rather, I compete with him and I want to beat him this, in this incident. So he said, I couldn't wait. By the dawn, I rushed to the house of that young man. I knocked on the door. فَقُلْتُ يَا أَبَا عَبْدِ الرَّحْمَنِ يَا أَبَا عَبْدِ الرَّحْمَنِ And he came out. And early morning, the Adhan, Bilal did not call the Adhan. قَالَ مَا بِكَ يَا بِنُ الْخَطَّابِ فَقَالَ إِبْشِرْ فَإِنِّي سَمِعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ He said, glad tidings to you. I have heard the messenger of Allah said, if you ever want to read the Quran, the way it was revealed, to read the way you just read it. Congratulations. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, that was Abdullah, he smiled. قَالَ بَارَكَ اللَّهُ فِيكَ يَا عُمَرْ However, Abu Bakr was here before you. سَبَقَكَ أَبَا بَكْرِ Subhanallah. Now look. The Sahaba used to compete one another of delivering a bad, I'm sorry, not delivering, I'm sorry, they used to compete with one another delivering good news, not bad news. So let us follow this, let us follow them suit, let us follow their footsteps, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may resurrect us because we love them ajma'een. Radiyallahu anhum ajma'een. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.